Welcome. Today we're going to talk about actually this thing right beside me. What is it? Nah, not the sticker. Although I like the sticker. It is a oh, clamshell iPad case. But most importantly, it's got a trackpad. So we're going to talk about this case. We're going to talk about how good it is, what it's useful for, what you may like it for. And we're going to talk about specifically iPadOS 13.4 and how official trackpad support from the Magic Trackpad impacted this device. Buckle up. So my big reason in getting this, this keyboard case, now I got my iPad in it, was to ask for $99, $99, that's right, that's all this cost, compared to, it was 99 US, compared to like 230 for the bridge case, and now with the new iPad case, it's which is like, I don't know the Canadians like, but it's like 449 US, I think, maybe that's Canadian, 399 US. Is it really worth, or are these other cases really worth, you know? multiple hundreds of dollars more, are they providing that much more value than this keyboard right here? So that's what we're going to look at, really. Are we getting hundreds of dollars more value out of this? So what is this? This is, as you can see, it is a laptop case. I've got my iPad in it, right? I can turn it on. It's got a hardware off-on switch, which is excellent. Uh, it even has backlights, if you like that. I don't actually care about backlights, so I never use them. <laughs> um, right, it opens, it, or it should wake it up. It's asking for my face. No, passcode. There we go. Um, we're in there. It's got a trackpad on it. All right, it's hard to see here, but it's got a trackpad on it that functions. Um, and now this actually came out before iOS 13.4, so it is really like emulating a mouse. It That's exactly what it's doing. Um, and it actually came with a whole bunch of gestures, like three-finger tap that allowed you to go home, a number of other three-finger gestures that were like, you know, pull in with three fingers and you get a cut. Uh, I think it was, and double is copy. I think it was actually the copy of single, double is cut, and then spread out is paste, and couldn't get any of those spreading ones to work really at all because it's just a fairly small trackpad to get that type of interactivity on. Um, and then with the advent of 1304, iPad, 1304, iPadOS 13.4, and I've actually done a video on that trackpad support. I talked a little bit about this just briefly. Um, because I was only a few hours of use with it. Um, what I've actually found is it's worse because we lost those three finger gestures um, for some reason. Um, I feel like the scrolling is worse on it now. And I, yeah, I feel like the overall utility of it, the usefulness of it just kind of went down. Not a ton, not a ton. It didn't get like terrible, but it went down a bit. So it's not quite as nice as it was originally. I'm really glad I actually held off on this. Uh, so I was going to record it last week and then I kind of heard that 1304 was really coming and I waited um, because that did make a difference in it. But let's look really as far as the case goes. Some of the nice things about the case is it's got the hard, uh, like a clip-free Apple Pencil in here, right? You can pull it up and the Apple Pencil clips in and out. That's nice, keeps the Apple Pencil nice and secure. It is fairly robust. Like I think that as far as the usefulness of your iPad long term, this will continue to be useful for you. It's going to last as long as your iPad is going to last. I like that. Um, the keys on the keyboard, they are decent. They're not spectacular, they're decent. A um, little mushy. I actually spent another hour with my bridge yesterday just to make sure, working from my couch here, uh, and put the trackpad up on the arm. Um, the Apple Magic trackpad. And the keys on this are definitely not as nice as the bridge, but they're not terrible. Um, they feel mushy is the best, I would say. And not because, like, there's not a lot of flex in this. Like, it's it's a fairly solid piece of plastic, but they still don't feel quite as nice as the bridge. Um, one of the other things I don't love, which you'll see in the B-roll here, is that because of the weight of the base of the keyboard, when it's on your lap, it tips back. And that is not something that happens with the bridge. The bridge sits on your lap and I, you know, you can hit the bottom corners of the keyboard and it just works fine. It stays where it should be without issue. I like that. As far as battery life on this is concerned, they claim 2.5 hours. I haven't charged it since I got it and I've definitely used it for like an hour and a half yesterday, uh, probably two hours yesterday. And longer than that, like far past their 2.5, which is claimed in their manual. Now, that could be a translation issue. There's certainly some, um, I'm not sure what, Asian language, Japanese, Chinese language translation issues where it's just not correct in English. Not terrible, but not correct. Um, so that could be that. 
It also could be that they're saying 2.5 hours with the backlight on. Like I already said, I never use the backlights. If you see a backlight in a video, it's just for the video. I actually never use them. I always turn them off because I don't need it. I, I actually, I literally don't understand why you people need backlights. I don't, outside of, hey, it looks fancy. And my kids always want to, you know, an RGB keyboard. They always want to change it. And like, let's kind of make it look shiny dad or bounce. And I'm like, whatever, sure. That is the only utility for me in backlight. I do not use them. So without backlights, I'm getting a good amount of use in it. I, I haven't got it. I had this about a month and a half now, and it's been uncharged that entire time. It keeps working. Um, they say that the battery light will start flashing at you when it needs to charge, and so I assume it will if it's not yet, so I'm not worrying about it. One big thing I love about it is the hardware on-off switch, because I definitely have had the bridge, which if you hold the power button, it turns it on, hold it again, turn it off. I have had that activate itself in my drawer and I've been like somewhere else in the house trying to like touch and I'm like, why is it not? Why is the keyboard not coming up? The software one, I'm like, oh, the bridge is attached. So I couldn't just disconnect it from the iPad at that point and sometimes I do, but I also, you know, have to come down and turn it off down here because it's just killing the battery. So I like the hardware switch. I have not had this deactivate or reactivate by accident. That's, it's good. One thing I am concerned about construction wise is if you're going to take your iPad in and out of the case a bunch, it's not as difficult as some other cases, uh, specifically the Logitech keyboard case I reviewed a number of months back. I'll have a link up top. Uh, it's not as bad as that. It's easy to get in and out, but I am worried that the rigid plastic will crack over time. Um, unlike the bridge where you can buy new rubber feet to insert into the clips that retain the keyboard, you can't buy like a new top case for this. So once the top case breaks, it's just kind of a keyboard. Like it's not, you can still use it if you want to, but there are far better just keyboards for your iPad if you're gonna go that route. Now back to the battery front. I said it does, they say it lasts 2.5 hours, getting way more than that. They say it takes three hours to charge. Sure, I mean, I just plug it in and eventually it says charge and that's fine. I don't think about it because I'm usually working, doing other stuff and charging things in my charging station. Now my big gripe with the battery though, and this goes for like any, any Bluetooth device that's working with iPadOS, is it doesn't report its battery level to iPadOS. Why not? Like that's just needs to be table stakes, people. So yeah. I'd like to see that. It does take USB-C, which is excellent. That is way better than the Inatech keyboard that I have, which does not take that. It takes micro USB. I USB-C, everything people don't send. If you're sending something for an iPad Pro, USB-C, that's kind of it. Anything less is, anything else is stupid. Now, an additional thing dealing with the trackpad uh, is that it is bad at palm rejection. It's just bad at palm rejection. That's it. I had hoped that iPadOS 13.4 would do something with this but it hasn't. So maybe a future version of iPadOS will, uh, maybe when the new keyboard comes out, that's, you know, they announced with the iPads last week, maybe that will actually have better palm rejection at the software level in the operating system. But right now it didn't make a difference. They do make it easy to turn the trackpad off though, by hitting function T, then you can turn your trackpad off and do totally fine. I do that when I'm in long typing sessions. And then when I want to turn it back on, I just hit function T again. That's it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just okay. That's all it is. It's not bad. It's not good. It's, it's okay. Um, what we need really is better palm rejection. So I find if I'm going to use it, you know, in testing, like with my spare monitor and with my iPad and everything up at my desk, and I'm standing a little higher, a little better ergonomically, then I don't actually hit it almost ever. And it's not a problem. But if I'm sitting at my couch trying to work off my lap, I hit it regularly and it's a problem. So I just turn it off and on. So now back to backlighting, you can change it. You can change colors by hitting function and the option key or function and the key on it. You can also make it breathe if you want with uh, function Q and function W. Great. Um, one of the things about the keyboard I hate, I don't know why people do this. I'll show it to you since we're right here, is that they jam in. See right in the bottom corner, right where we see the arrows. What else do you see? Page up and page down makes it super hard to even use it. Uh, I've continually found myself misclicking and having issues with that. Outside of that, they've got your standard function row, right? Brightness, search, the keyboard key, they got to like the world key, they got a cut, copy, paste, which kind of only sort of works, so I don't use them. Play, pause, brightness, speaker, great. And then the lock key. This actually annoyed me at first. Hit the lock key, which is up above your delete key. You can't just hit it, it won't do anything. You have to hit function and then hold it. So you, it's function is on the lower left and lock is on the upper right. You can't do it, I can't do it. Like, uh, I can hit the plus, oh, I can't do it. So I thought this is super annoying, why did they do that at first? But then I hit the lock a few times while hitting delete 
and I that's I'm glad you have to hit function. That's better. Um, they could do better if they kind of scooted the brightness controls over and put the lock key beside the home key, and then you could do it actually with one hand easily. I used to do this, I do this regularly where I hit lock um, with my with one hand while I'm doing, say, cooking or something else, and I don't want to like get everything, so I just have one, this finger's clean, and like press the lock, and it's locked my iPad rather than just leaving it on, because I don't actually let my iPad sleep. It just stays on all the time, no matter what, unless I manually make it sleep. And my final question is, should you buy this keyboard? It's, I don't know, it's got some really long name. It's like keyboard case with trackpad for iPad 12.9 serial like your model number yada 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 it's one of those crazy Amazon ones should you buy it I was all set to say absolutely good value the trackpads eh, but we didn't have trackpad support so like whatever um now I'm gonna say I'm not sure that's I, I was all set not to buy the new bridge pro plus keyboard um and then I looked at the Apple when it came out I was like god that's so crazy that's so expensive and now like I said I spent most of yesterday using this and then I switched over to the bridge just to give it a test again. And I thought, oh, I missed the trackpad. I kept reaching for the trackpad. So I ended up putting the trackpad on the arm of my couch here. And even then I was like, I keep wanting to reach for it on the keyboard. So I don't know. I think that I'm gonna say, if you got 99 bucks, go for it. If you find it in stock, it doesn't look like it's in stock on Amazon right now, then go for it. 99 bucks isn't that much to try to see if it works for you. But there's that new Apple one coming out. And so I think I'm going to buy that new Apple one. And I'm not sure that I'm going to buy the Bridge Pro Plus keyboard, whatever it's called, because that's just a lot of keyboards and a lot of money to try. And I, like, you want to donate me one? I'd love Bridge. You're watching. Send me your Pro Plus keyboard. I would love to review it. I love my Bridge keyboard. It's a great keyboard. I am very tempted that that's going to be the keyboard that I still take places. Like if I have to go work, not that we're working remotely right now, but if I'm going to go work for the day in the next town because I have a meeting at night, I would still take my Bridge with me. And because the trackpads are so slim, it's not a mouse, and you don't need extra space on your table, really. If you can get it on there, you have all the space you need. I would take the trackpad with me, too, and just put it beside. But I'm not sure I'd take this. At least not yet. If you got 99 bucks and you say, I want to try the trackpad, I'm willing to just see if this works for me, by all means. I anticipate, well, I know the Apple one will be better, but it's also, you know, four times as much. Um, the bridge one, I don't know if it'll be better. We'll have to see what bridge does. If they can get some of the gestures in uh, iPad OS 13, like your three finger swipe up, some of your swipe to the side gestures that you do not get with other trackpads and you only get with the Apple Magic Trackpad 2. If the bridge can get that too, then uh, that would be a compelling option as well because it is a nice keyboard. One of the reasons I'm still not sure about that one though, is it doesn't make a great case and it's a little harder to get in and out. So I can see with the new Apple one coming out, using the Apple keyboard and just sticking it in a drawer, but when I'm out and about taking it, and then taking just a regular magnetic case for my iPad and like magneting that off and on the keyboard when I'm not needing the case, or when I'm not needing the keyboard case, just using that as like my protection layer. That's kind of what I do with the Inatech right now. I have it in the rubber layer, and then I have the keyboard in a drawer, and I just grab the keyboard when I need the keyboard. I don't worry about it otherwise. That's it. That was my review of this crazily long named Amazon keyboard thing. 99 bucks, decent value, decent keyboard, definitely cheaper than the bridge. If you're gonna say just, I'm only gonna use it as a keyboard, it's absolutely $99 to a better value than just the bridge keyboard on its own. Uh, if you're gonna say, I want the trackpad too, I don't know yet. But just as a keyboard, better value than just the bridge because it's, it's a decent keyboard, it works well. There's no knock against the keyboard itself, a little mushier than the bridge. Bridge is a little crisper. This is also lighter. The bridge kind of tips, or this tips on your lap. The bridge doesn't, but this doesn't tip on any hard surface, even on my couch beside me, and I put it down and tapped it there. Totally fine, stays stable. It's just on my lap where it tips backwards. So just as a laptop-style keyboard case, goodbye. Including the trackpad, and eh, the trackpad's only okay. But if you like the video, you can give me a thumbs up. If you love the video, subscribe, but don't hit the bell because you got better things to do, like you know, hang out with your kids. I don't know, play a pandemic, play a board game, hang out in your house, video call with a friend. I don't know, something like that. Have a good day.